Okay, so good morning, everybody. And here we are back at the beginning. And I'm so glad to get to learn with um, with you, Parshat Bereshit, the beginning of Genesis and our creation stories. And I want to open by looking at, I mean, there's so much. I always feel like it's unfair that, um, you know, there's some weeks where the Parsha has um, a lot in it, but maybe not as much as it is juicy. And Parsha Parashit, there's so much. There's so many stories all crammed into one Parsha. And each of the stories bears like weeks of learning. And yet we cram it in on our Parsha cycle. I mean, we could slow it down, but then we're behind on the other ones. And Noah, next week is just as good. So um, it's always hard to decide what to land on. But um here is what we are going to land on today. We're going to land on the creation story. Uh, um, and we're going to land on specifically the creation story that um, is, the, well, we're going to land on the second creation story, right? So some of us know and remember, uh, hold on, I got to get back to my beginning. Okay. Some of us know and remember that there's there's two stories that are um, explanations of how God creates the world in the Torah. Those of us conservative Jews like to play the scholarship game. Well, they came from two different sources. They were put together. Fine. That's interesting. That's not where we're going to go this morning. And I want us to think to, to play with this chapter two story. Such is the story of heaven and earth when they were created, when God, Adonai, made earth and heaven, when no shrub of the field was yet on earth and no grasses of the field had yet sprouted because God, Adonai, had not sent rain upon the earth and there were no human beings to till the sto- soil, but a flow would well up from the ground and water the whole surface of the earth. God, Adonai, right? So that's the Adonai Elohim, formed the human Et ha'adam, from the soil's afar, min ha'adama, from the soil's humus is the translation here. Blowing into his nostrils the breath of life, the human became a living being. God, Adonai, planted a garden in Eden in the east and the place there, the human who had been fashioned. And from the ground, God caused to grow every tree that was pleasing. Okay, we get trees, we get rivers, we get names of rivers. God settled the human in the Garden of Eden to till it and tend it. God had and I commanded the human, saying, of every tree of the garden you are free to eat. But as for the tree of knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat of it. For as soon as you eat of it, you shall die. God said, it is not good for the human to be alone. I will make a fitting counterpart for him. And God had and I formed out of the earth all the wild beasts and all the birds of the sky and brought them to the human to see what he would call them. Whatever the human called each living creature, that would be its name. And the human gave names to all the cattle and to the birds, but no fitting counterpart for a human being was found. So God, Adonai, cast a deep sleep upon the human. And while he slept, God took one of his sides and closed up the flesh at that site. Vayikach achat mitzalotav, one of his sides, asterisk, meaning of Hebrew uncertain, and closed up the flesh at that site. And God had an eye fashioned that side that had been taken from the human into a woman, bringing her to the human. Then the human said, this one at last is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for from a human was she taken. Hence a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife. So they became one flesh. Okay. Pausing there. And I'm going to stop the share so I can share something else with us. Um, And what I want to share is to focus us in on one particular verse of that story. Here we are. Let's start our slideshow. Just need this to fade away. There we go. From start. One particular verse, the third one we just read, the one where the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And here's the thing. Look at how the word is spelled. Hebrew mavens. What's unusual about this word? Yeah, there's two yuds. So Andy says there's two yuds. Hebrew mavens, why is that weird? Because normally we only need one yud. God's name is two yuds. God. So, right. So, there's certain abbreviated um, abbreviations of the yud, hey, vav, hey, the tetragrammation that also has two yuds. It's a nice connection, Andy. 
So here, the question becomes, this becomes something for the rabbis to play with, right? Like, what, what's up with these two yuds, right? Because there's no wasted letter, there's no wasted anything in the Torah, not a dot, not a letter. So what's up with that second yud? So we're going to learn some Talmud together. Rav Nachman, son of Rav Chista, taught why in this verse, the Lord God made man is made, Vayetzer, written with two yuds. The Holy One, blessed be he, created two inclinations in Hebrew, Yetzer, right? Yetzer hara, Yetzer ato. So it's the same word. Two inclinations, the good and the bad. Hmm. Rav Jeremiah ben Elazar said, two faces did the Holy One, blessed be he, create in the first man. So here we have two ideas, and I'm going to pause and ask for our responses to all of this. Two ideas about what the yud, the extra yud might be. One is the yetzer hatov and the yetzer hara, because remember, that's exactly the word, vayetzer adonai Elohim. God created, right? God formed, inclined himself toward creation, this man. Um, And the other one is two faces. So I'll stop the share and open up for some discussion. If anyone wants to comment, if not, we can push on. Could it be man and woman? Okay, good. So we know we're going to get in the story a man and a woman. So so what are you saying? Are you saying the man and woman is is what? The two the two years? One is man and one was okay, very nice. Very nice. So that so there's a third possibility. There are some other possibilities in the Talmud also that I didn't include here. That is not one of them that gets suggested though, Ed, but I like that idea. Although then we have to account for what happens later when he takes woman out of the side, you know, but still. Other ideas? Yeah, I have something. Yeah, Andy. Um, what about the tree of knowledge of good and bad? The same thing with good and bad there. Right. So that's the Yetzer Hatov and Yetzer Hara. Very nice. So that would be a theme. So maybe that's where this, this Stam anonymous opinion comes from is maybe building on that. Very nice. Okay. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And okay. So pushing on a little <laughs> bit. He who says, we're still in the Talmud, right? So the Talmud goes on to say, he who says, the one who says that the rib means face is in agreement with the text that says male and female, God made them simultaneously, which is a verse we get a few chapters from now. Hmm. But what about the one for whom rib means tail make of? So we didn't get into that, but there's another male and female. I made them simultaneously. Don't get caught up on the tail. I skipped it for us to keep us on time. One must follow the lesson of Rabbi Abahu. This is what I'm trying to get us to. For Rabbi Abahu objected. It's written. He created the male and female. It is written. Man was made in the image of God. How is it possible? God first had in mind to create two. And in the end, created only one. I'm going to keep going because there's just a lot of juicy ideas to talk about in here and to think about. So we could say that the building on what Ed was saying, male and female, God made them simultaneously later on. Maybe that's the second yud. How is it possible for us to be made simultaneously man and woman, but we're both in God's image? Okay, that's starting to come up. Um, And I want to bring us to one of my favorite philosophers whom you've heard me quote and teach before. Emmanuel Levinas, who died in 1995. And here's what he says. I translated two inclinations according to custom. Yetzer is translated as inclination. Sorry, my screen is doing some funky things. Okay. The word really means creature. The first answer, therefore, means that the creation of the human being is extraordinary. To create a man was to create in one creature two. They were two in one. And this does not refer to woman. There will be no reference to woman until the end of these three initial statements. What is the human being? What is the human being? The fact that a being is two while remaining one. A division, a rupture in the depth of his substance or simply consciousness and choice, life at the crossroads, between two possibilities, between two tendencies which exclude or oppose each other. Consciousness and liberty would be the definition of man, in short, reason. In other words, man's humanity would be the end of interiority, 
the end of the subject. Everything is open. I am everywhere. I am looked through. Thus, one can understand why Jonah could not escape his mission. This is what it means to have two faces. With only a single face, I have a place in the rear of the head, the occiput, in which my hidden thoughts and my mental reservations accumulate. Refuge which can hold an entire thought. But here, instead of the occiput, a second face, everything is exposed. Everything in me confronts fefas and my answer. I cannot, even through sin, separate myself from this God who looks at me and touches me. You are always exposed. Hmm. I pause there. What would we like to share and chew on? That's all. That those are all. That's all of our texts. I've given you more than enough texts for the day. Who wants to think about this with me? This idea. I'm really taken with this idea that we have this private space in the back of our heads, and somehow that there's a separation, but on an exposure. And and what does that mean to be a human being who has that privacy? And this the place to to hide from one another and from God. Yeah, Erica. I don't know. I'm 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 with you on the what a great idea that 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 it resides in the back of your head where we know your eye, like you know, your eyes are back there. Like in, in truth, like you're it's connected like to your eyes in the back of your head. Um, and also that it's this idea of of hiddenness from each other, but does it mean hiddenness from God? Because God supposedly knows everything. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And he's playing there. I didn't include all the text because time is short, but um, he's playing with some verses from Psalms, which the Talmud gets into about God. Um, there's a verse, you you hedge me from before and behind. And the Talmud actually brings that and talks about God being in front and in back. And so if you have two faces, there's no place to hide because God, you're looking at like God seeing you and you're seeing God in both ways. And, and so that's what he's playing with. But you're right. Like, what does that mean for us who has a back of the head? And I love what you're saying about the eyes. Anyone else want to jump in? So I got something again. Yeah, Andy. It's, uh, it has to do with the word Yetzer. Because mm-hmm. in the end, end, end of uh, the Parsha, the uh, whole Yetzer machshavot libo rak ra kol hayom. So that's the Yetzer hara. Good. End. Can you give us the translation of that for everybody? Uh, yeah, let me just see what it says in the English here. I, I know what it means, but I mean, it's just... I don't yeah, know. no, I, that's fine. Let me find it. Uh, see, so the English is on a different side, so here, oh, here it is. <laughs> I got it, okay. So, Hashem saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth, and that every product of the thoughts of his heart was but evil always. So, it's a, that's Yitzhah Hara. It's Vachal Yitzhah Machshavot Libo. And that's right. why that's why he destroys everyone except for Noah. Right. It's a very good connection that this word Yetzer comes up over and over again. And what does it mean in all these valences, which is what the Talmud is playing with also. Anyone else want to respond? Yeah, Joel. And that, when I saw that, what I thought about was the fact that our brains are divided into two hemispheres, left and right. And the left side is the analytic side and the right side is the creative side. Beautiful. So there's like internal divisions, right? And that's... that's um. That's almost, it reminds me of like the first screen, the second part of the, um, you know, the first part of the reading of the Levinas, which is like what it means to be human is to be, is to be divided. And you're saying like, even inside of ourselves, we have these divisions. There's a left and a right. Yeah. Each in charge of something else, some other aspect of our reality and our shaped, shaping our reality. Anyone else? All right. Well, my friends, my hope is as we begin um, this Torah reading cycle today, um, that all of our yitzrot, all of our inclinations, and now I'm using it in the sense of yitzar tov and yitzar ra, should continue to incline toward the tov, toward the good. And that all of the divisions and the secret thoughts and secret places that we have, that we should walk through our day recognizing that we're secret, but we still have a face, right? And that um, elsewhere in Torah, in Pirkei Avot, it says, greet everybody with a, a shining countenance, with a, with a smile and a happy face. And I feel like that's embedded in this text so that we're invited to think about how do we start a new year? How do we start a new day? How do we greet one another? And to remember that our face is part of our humanity. And even though we have all the secret stuff going on in the side of 
us and the left brain and the right brain and the secrets that we keep in the back of our head, um, that what we show through with our eyes and our smile can bring a lot of love and joy and goodness. And through that, through that, we see and experience God and people experience the divine through us and our greeting. So I hope everybody has a blessed day full of beautiful faces and greetings. And I look forward to learning with you again next week. Rabbi, about, about, about next week. Have a great day, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you, Rabbi. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Thank you.